Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs and today's part of the M show, what every maker should have, should perhaps better be called every maker should build one of these RLC boxes. Why should you build it? Because as far as I know, you can't buy them. And even if you could buy them, uh, they would be prohibitively expensive because uh, you'll see in a minute that they are all hand wired. What you can do with them, I'll explain also uh, in a minute. Uh, first of all, you see uh, a lot of uh, switches. Uh, that's uh, the first uh, group of switches, which is uh, designated here with high and low. It is you have uh, three rotary switches with uh, 24 steps and two independent sections, so that in the end you can make 48 uh, contacts or you can select between 48 values of the components of the resistance, of the inductors and of the capacitors. And depending on the uh, step size from one component to the next value, I uh, here choose uh, about a 50% increase from one to the next one. Uh, here you get nearly seven decades. Uh, let's take a look at the resistance. It goes from one ohms in the lowest position up to uh, 68 mega ohms. Um, so, and you, the high low switches just uh, switches between the upper and the lower section of the rotary switch. So that's what the first part of the switches is for. Uh, just take a uh, let's take a look what the capacitors go. They go from 10 picofarads up to 680 microfarads, and the inductors they go from 10 nano henrys up to 680 milli henrys. So quite a large range. Of course, if you want uh, narrower steps between one component value and the next, you get lower. You get not the a full seven decade uh, range, but uh, you can build it just as you desire, and you can also build the multiple uh, RLC boxes. Um, now, as you can see, we have uh, two four millimeter uh, banana jacks uh, where you can um, that are connected uh, to the component values. So if if the the other two uh, group of the switches where you can see series, parallel and independent. They are double pole, double throw switches with a center position. And if they stand in the center position, uh, which is uh, designated as independent, then uh, uh, the uh, single components are disconnected from their neighbors. So if you want to uh, uh, you can use uh, the resistance, the inductance and the capacitors independent of the others uh, of their own. But uh, what's of course interesting is uh, when you connect them either in series or uh, parallel to uh, the other component. And that gives, gives you the freedom just uh, to simulate a lot of um, basic circuits like uh, for how to remember just how the switch settings have to be and how the connections which at which banana jacks uh, plugs uh, jack banana jacks I have to tap off. Uh, I've, I've made some little diagrams are not very good but for me it's enough. So you can use them it's sorry it's in German here as a high pass filter as a a low pass filter, you can um, connect them as a band stop or band reject filter. You can use them as a band pass filter. Uh, e even uh, because we also have the resistor, even with um, parasitic uh, resistance, um, to um, to give you uh, to to raise the ESR the equivalent series resistance of your uh, bandpass filter, and of course uh, on the back side I have uh, connections um, shown for a series resonant circuit or parallel resonant circuit which are sometimes also called tank circuits or oscillator circuits. 
so uh, quite versatile and uh, on the back side I still uh, printed out a little table which kind of components I used and up to which a voltage they are use usable. I tried to use the highest uh, quality components like um, Styroflex, um, uh, film capacitors, uh, tantalum um, uh, capacitors, etc. And um, well, if you take a look at inside, it's quite a mess. Um, and now you can see why it's probably not possible to build this um, commercially on a PCB because all the components are directly soldered uh, to the rotary switches. The reason is I wanted to make this usable for uh, also for well not really high frequency use but at least that you can use them up to a few dozen megahertz and uh, that's why I used thick uh, copper magnet wire or enameled copper wire however you want to call them and uh, made all, all direct connection. I know it really looks like a mess, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it works. Um, so um, I'll give you the, uh, the uh, connection diagram uh, to build one of your own. It's, it's basically self-explaining how you have to wire uh, <coughs> the, uh, the switches to get the, the right arrangement and I also give you the um, the file to print out the front uh, panel and uh, with which uh, program you can print it out. So uh, th that was uh, quite a lot of labor I put in. I, it took me I think a few weekends to make all the connections and to build it all into a case. Um, a simpler version is a, an RC uh, box, but it is not as versatile as the RLC box I just showed you. Uh, for some, uh, sometimes you only need a uh, nearly stepless uh, changeable resistor. And uh, I uh, just made a little trick. I uh, bought a 10 turn a trim pot of one kilo ohms resistance with uh, one percent accuracy and a 10 turn pot with 100 kilo ohms uh, resistance and then these little well semi digital or mixed analog digital uh, dials for these 10 turn trim pots and uh, because they are connected in series you can uh, either use them more or less uh, separate, but they, they are also, you can also connect them in series so that you can go from around 1 ohms up to 100 kilo ohms just uh, with these uh, two uh, dials. And let's see if uh, the um, if the accuracy is good enough. So let's connect let's take the one kilo ohm resistor and let's dial in let's say a value of 245 ohms this should be this position and you see it's 200 uh, just take it a little bit to the left and you see it's 243 and something, so that's the 1% accuracy. So you can be relatively sure that the value you dial in is also relatively good um, uh, achieved uh, in, in practice with 1% one, 1 accuracy. And um, sadly, it's not possible to have variable capacitors with large capacitance values. Uh, I've uh, here used a uh, variable capacitor of 680 picofarad maximum capacity and it has a, a second uh, package f with a maximum of 50 picofarads. So that's not, not very uh, large. But anyway, for some uh, purposes, it's uh, simply sufficient to have 
a variability in the capacitance range up to a 680 a picofarad and of course if you connect them in uh, series uh, you can also simulate ju just as with the uh, bigger RLC box here uh, th this one is uh, stepped with but with a much larger range and uh, this one has the advantage of being um, uh, analog so you can set any uh, value uh, but uh, with a smaller range. And this one is also easier uh, to build, just two uh, 10 turn trim ports, a few uh, banana uh, sockets and a variable capacitor. So that's a project uh, for one or two weekends you can do on your own and you should always, uh, it's even for uh, quite easy to build for beginners and you should always have uh, one at hand when it comes to probing out circuits where you have to find out the right combination of resistance, capacitance, uh, inductance, or a, any combination of that. So that was it for today. A little deviation from our standard, uh, the things we usually talk about here at the M Show, what every maker should have. But anyway, um, one time or another we'll also talk about a test and measurement equipment and this is one you can build on your own quite easily and you cannot buy or cannot buy at a reasonable price. So that was it for today. Short demo, um, something every maker should have. That was it and Roger says bye from Kankerlips. Until next time.